Hi everybody, I'm Megan and this is another special edition of the Billy Dance Quickies. So today we are in the Grand Forks, North Dakota airport and uh, Nadira and myself and Hiba, who's behind the camera right now, <laughs> helping us out, uh, are all waiting for our flight. <laughs> And uh, so we would get one more interview in while we had all these ladies together. And so today we have Nadira Jamal here from Billy Dance the Geek Clubhouse. And uh, she was one of our instructors. And one of the, the workshops she was doing was, was her uh, six-part routine workshop. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So something that is, you don't see all the time in modern belly dance shows because uh, it's, it's something that comes from another time, a little glamorous, wonderful <laughs> time that still has some relevance. So, yeah, tell us all about it. Thanks, Mahim. Uh, so the first thing to know about the six-part routine is that almost nobody calls it the six-part routine. Um, I learned it as the five-part routine, and I've heard folks on the West Coast call it the seven-part routine. But when I actually started trying to teach this and wrote up my notes, I realized that every time I'd ever used this st structure, the band had always given me exactly six parts. So you won't really hear the six-part routine, but if you hear five or seven, we're talking about the same thing. Mm -hmm. So this is the traditional nightclub routine structure in American cabaret style, and also in some areas in Turkey. Um, also, Yasmin Henkesh, um, who danced, is in the D.C. area, she danced in Cairo in the 80s, and she told me that uh, that format was actually used in Egyptian dance um, as late as the 1940s. Uh, but after that, it shifted to the more typical oriental routine, folklore routine, um, that you're more likely to see in the last several decades. Um, so the six-part routine is a really interesting structure. Um, it begins with an upbeat introduction, follows with a lyrical veil section, which obviously would not have been present in the Egyptian routine, but they would have done another slow lyrical section there. Um, a medium tempo middle section, a nice slow shift to telly, a super upbeat drum solo, and then a finale to close out the show. And so that, that's the general structure. Um, but what's interesting about that and what makes it so useful is that it has built-in highs and lows. Right? So it starts super upbeat, then it slows down. It brings it up to a medium tempo, and then it goes really slow and deep. And then it goes to a super exciting drum solo, and then levels off for a finale. So it's kind of like riding a roller coaster. It's, you know, it's all about the ups and downs. Right, yeah. And so, you know, the thing about entertaining is that our goal is to manipulate the audience for their own enjoyment, right? And manipulation is not really, you know, a good word. <laughs> we don't like to think of ourselves as manipulators. Yeah. But really, that's what the audience has come for. They're, they're asking you to take them on a journey. And yes. so, the, the six-part routine is designed to do that. It's built right into the format. So instead of being responsible for that uh, and having to, you know, spend a whole 20 or 30 minutes trying to build that in, just the fact that uh, that's the convention already has that available for you. Right. Yes. So we, uh, we know that you know, this came about and was really in its height back in the Amtrak Club days. Um, and, you know, these days we don't really have many venues that still do that. So let's talk about like the relevance of this traditional format for now and about the adaptations that we can use to have some of those um, elements of positive manipulation within the context of how long are we usually dance? Absolutely. Well, you know, one thing is that um, if you're lucky, this actually does still exist. So uh, there are quite a few like big restaurants mm -hmm. out there still where that's still a very appropriate place. So if you're the performer for the night rather than one dancer among many in a show, mm -hmm. uh, it's actually still a great choice. And do. for those lucky people who actually still have live music. Yeah. Which is rare and rare yeah. anymore. Yeah. If you have live music, it's, it's, uh, if it's a live music and it's not an Arabic band, that's pretty much a given that that's what you're going to get. Um, but you can also do the same thing with a CD based routine. Let's say you're dancing at a wedding, mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, obviously, if it's Arabs, you want to stick with a more Egyptian or, or uh, like Levantine uh, structure. But if you're dancing you know, for a more general audience, if you're dancing for Greeks, for Armenians, for Turks, this is a very appropriate structure to use. Right. Um, but let's say you have a shorter amount of time, which is much more common. Uh, the traditional routine, again, tends to be you know, 20 to 30 minutes. Back in the day, it could be 45 minutes or longer. Mm -hmm. Uh, but let's say you have like a 15 minute party here, right? There are a few ways you can approach it. You can take those same six parts and just use shorter songs. Um, and in general, you want to have some of them longer than others, right? If it's hard to do a veil piece in two minutes. It's possible, but it's rushed, right? But a two minute drum solo is awesome. Yes. You know, especially because it's near the end of your show and you're exhausted. And so that's, that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. um, but 
uh, if you have even shorter sections, like maybe like 10 minutes or 8 minutes, um, what you can do is instead of shortening all of your songs, you can drop out certain sections. But the key is we really need to keep that roller coaster process moving. So you need to have something that starts fast, right? So a slow introduction, a slow dramatic introduction is possible to do, um, but it's a lot harder to pull off because you need to really capture people's attention, you need to get them in the party mood, you need to set the tone, and that's a little bit harder to do with a dramatic piece. So generally you do want to stick with that upbeat intro, and then you switch to something that's slow. You know, you could do the veil piece, or you could drop the veil section entirely and go straight on to a shift telly. Then you could take the energy back up, maybe you go straight into a drum solo from there, um, or maybe you go directly into the finale if you don't have a lot of time. Right. Yeah, so basically you're keeping the, you're keeping the, the curve and the, and the um, level change of the piece's energy without having such an amount of length to have exactly. to deal with. Exactly. So. And you know, even so, you'll also find um, some pieces of music that were composed for dancers specifically oh, yeah. will sometimes have that built in. So sometimes oh, okay. you'll get a five or six minute song <laughs> that has an upbeat intro, a little slow section, whether that's you know shift to, a shift to telly chunk mm -hmm. within it, or whether it's you know some improvisations, either over rhythm or not. Right. Um, sometimes you even get a little mini drum solo built in. So sometimes you'll actually find this in music that already exists. Yes. And that's really handy yes, when yes, you can yes. find something like you're, that. Yeah, there are all these great pieces of music to have. And one thing I like to do when I get a piece of music like that is I will put it in Audacity and edit it and somewhere after the Taksim, I'll cut the music and then I'll put my own drum solo that I want in there mm -hmm. and then put the ending back on and then everything is nice and seamless and, and everything has, it has an arc to it, it has some development, it's taken a little ride Absolutely. and that works really well. Oh, that's, it is free, so it's awesome. It's <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, fantastic. So if people want to know a little bit more and have some more experience, I hear you have something coming up in June. Do I do. I have a program that I offer online every summer. It's called Rock the Routine. So that's a seven-week program where we take a deeper look at each of the sections. So what the traditional aesthetics are, what kind of music is appropriate, uh, what the conventions are, so what the audience is expecting. And then we also cover two improvisation strategies that are appropriate for each section. So if you're not improv yet, you can use those as a jumping off point to create choreography. Or if you're trying to take up improv, it's very helpful because essentially I give you a mission. You get to plug in uh, you know, the moves or combinations that you fit, think fit that mission. Um, but you have a nice clear goal, so that makes decision making a lot easier. Yes, it does. And in choreography, when you're in an unknown space, is oftentimes difficult, especially yeah. if you are expected to interact with other people. I think choreography then Party becomes, becomes a, a burden, pretty much. So yeah, improvisation is one of the reasons why improvisation is so awesome. <laughs> so, uh, so I think that we're about to get on an airplane right now. So, and some of us don't have seats yet. <laughs> so, uh, uh, we're gonna wrap this up with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mickey. Such an awesome weekend. So, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna virtually hug him behind the camera Yay. there too. Love so, you. <laughs> so uh, we hope you guys have enjoyed the interview and uh, all of the little on-site things we've been doing from uh, this event. And I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful week. If you are not familiar with other days of the Belly Dance Cookies, check the box in, down there below the screen, and we'll also link over to Nadira's page where you can find out more about her. So have a good one. Bye bye.